It's Dave Lawrence. We're backstage at the Blue Note Hawaii, and we're having a moment in time with a member of the OBE, uh, John Mayle, joining us again. John, thank you very much for uh, following up our recent interview on the phone. Okay, well, that's great. Great to be here. Now we're on the premises. Yes, you're, <laughs> you're in the premises. And when we were talking the other day, one of the stories that people really uh, got me some feedback on was the early days of your career when you were backing some of these huge blues legends when they were making their first tours of the UK, guys like like John Lee Hooker, Sonny Boy Williamson, Freddie King. What comes to mind when you think back to maybe the first time you realized you were going to get a chance to do this? I guess that would have been John Lee Hooker. Well, you know, John Lee Hooker was the first one. So, um, you know, because we, he, he was brought over for the, for the first club tour uh, by the Gunnell Agency, who was the same agency who, who ran me. So, um, you know, I was the obvious choice to be his backing band. And that led to, uh, you know, various other... Uh, American blues artists coming over to the UK and uh, you know we we did a few with Sonny Boy Williamson and uh, T-Bone Walker we did a whole month with him so it was very exciting times. Which was the one that you felt you developed the most personal rapport with? Well I don't know everybody was very friendly you know they were just uh, glad that there was an audience in Europe which they didn't have in the States. John Lee would continue to be someone you'd know though. Who? John Lee Hooker. Oh yeah, yeah. He was he was he traveled around this, traveling with the whole country in the van. And years later, though, from that experience, did you maintain a friendship with him? Because for decades more, you'd still be both passing yeah, each other. Well, you know, friends are friends. You know, it doesn't matter how much time passes. You know, when you see him again, maybe five years go by. It's just like no time at all had uh, gone by. Freddie King, what was the experience like? Well, he was, he was, uh, I, I sat in with, with him quite a few times, and uh, of course he was one of my heroes, and uh, you know, we, we got along great. Bill Graham, I was looking at some of the incredible posters that feature your name, so many different lineups, I've, I've got a couple highlights here, but when you hear the name Bill Graham, what's the story that comes to mind of your experiences with him? Well, Bill Graham was the one who really uh, put, put a lot of uh, you know, rock and roll on the map for the general public and did it in a in a, in a very uh, respectful and very dynamic way. You know, he'd had all the best people design posters, and, uh, you know, he was just uh, a, a magnet. Everybody wanted to work for him, so he was, uh, he was a very important figure. You're on some really cool ones. Some of the ones are uh, Fillmore in Winterland with Jimi Hendrix and Albert King on the same bill. Yeah, that was Jimi's first appearance in, uh, in, in Northern California, and of course, we'd worked with Albert King before, and, and uh, so it was a great bill. You know, I think everybody enjoyed uh, the experience. Any particular memories of getting to be around Jimmy? Was that your only gig that you guys shared the stage? No, no, we 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 played together a lot in in, in England. You know, long before he came up on and for his American touring. So you know, he was always around, sitting in with everybody. So. He was uh, very impressed with all that was going on in England, and that was kind of put him on the map. And that same gig also featuring Albert King, who you'd later produce records with and do some really cool live, that one all-star live show that we talked about, the one that you and Etta James sort of had your falling out over. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that was not, j it was, that was a whole thing that was put together by, I, I forget the name of the company, but they, they booked all the, the American uh, black performers and, uh, you know, it was a, a very solid bill. Uh, the only one who was dissatisfied and didn't understand the terms of the agreement was uh, Etta, because uh, she thought that I was putting on the show <laughs> and was, you know, just because I was backing everybody, she thought I, I was the one who, who was, uh, you know, in charge of the thing. But actually, we were just hired by the company to do our part. Just thing. like her? Yeah, just like everybody else. And Albert was one of the guys on that, Bill. Yeah, well, I knew Albert, so, I mean, it was, you know, we always, we always got along well. What do you think made his playing so special? Well, yeah, all the best players have got an individu individual style that nobody else sounds like. So, you know, they're unique. Another gig that you did at the uh, Fillmore, same place you shared the stage with Albert, was with Arlo Guthrie. That's an unusual one. You're talking about Bill putting together packages where it sort of challenged the, the viewer, made you really think you were unusual pairings of folks. That would be one. Yeah, well, I never met him before or, or since. <laughs> well, I never met him then, so, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything what to say about it. But you remember the gig? 
Not really, you know, we did, we, you know, we were working all the time. So sometimes you'd share the gig with people, and other time was with Larry Coriel and Argent at the Fillmore. Do you remember that show? Um, I met Larry in England, I think, when he came over. But, uh, you know, we were all put on the same bill, I suppose. So when you guys would do some of those Fillmore shows, you wouldn't necessarily run into the cats backstage? Well, yeah, we would, obviously. Obviously we would, yeah. But, um, but you can't have no particular memory of the time with Larry Corio? No, he was, like I say, he was, he was a friend. He was a friend, and, you know, we, we kept in touch. Bo Diddley, Muddy Waters, and yourself all at Winterland on the same concert. Yeah, I remember that was the only time I met Muddy face to face, you know, so that was an exciting bill. And exciting for you on a personal note, I would imagine, as a blues fan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, that certainly was. You know, that Otis Spann was always one of my greatest uh, favorites, so, you know, we got to meet him as well. A challenging gig was when Herbie Hancock, Sextet, Elvin Bishop, and yourself all at the Fillmore West. Do you remember that one? It's a great poster. No, I don't know. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, you've had a life of a lot of gigs. Sha Na Na on the same bill with you. That's an eccentric one. Do you remember that? Well, you know, we we play concerts and you can be on the bill with anybody, you know, but it's just the one night you, you, you're there. And so it doesn't always have an enduring impact. Not not really. No, from a musician's point of view, it's like okay, great, and right. Unless you have like a deeper connection with them. One of the uh, quotes from the tour poster for this current tour of yours of Hawaii was BB uh, King commenting on you as this essential uh, part of the legacy of the blues. Uh, do you remember when you developed your relationship with him? Not really. Um, I don't know. He was just just always a great friend. Was that a sad loss? Do you remember? Was that uh, that it hit you? Well, it's kind of I- inevitable, you know. He wasn't in very good shape for for many years, you know. So in my opinion, he shouldn't have been, uh, you know, playing when he was had to sit down and he was famous. You know, he wasn't wasn't the BB King uh, that we all expected of him, perhaps. But uh, you know, he's a di- uh, a died in the world musician who just that was his life, playing playing the music that he loved and. Uh, and I, more power to him. This new record that's going to come out, I know Joe Walsh is a special guest. Is he the only special guest, or are there others? Yeah, he's the only one. Were you? Did he reach out to you? How did he end up on the album? Well, apparently he knew the, the owner of the studio, the, the, the House of Blues studio, where we recorded. So so he he, he requested to be on, on the album. So uh, that's it. He came down and, and put, his, put his two songs on there, two two songs so he he was in and out uh, we barely got a chance to (laughs) meet him you know because the whole album was done in three days and he was on the third day so um you know he was in and out within a couple of hours and uh, as we go to wrap it up a guy that you're probably the most closely associated with eric clapton he he always you always get peppered with eric clapton questions when was the last time that you talked to him i can't really remember it's got to be a few years ago was it a highlight doing your 70th birthday concert and having him sit in with you at that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that worked out because he just happened to be in town uh, that particular day and, uh, you know, he was just, just came along, so it was good. And your final question, are there any other artists that you really... You've gotten to play with so many people, share the bill with so many others, record with many people who looked up to you as a hero. Is there anyone that, that you still desire to maybe do a collaboration with, something that's unfinished business, sort of? Uh, it, it seems to me that I've done work with just about everybody that's on the planet, you know. And, uh, um, you know, I don't consciously think about these things unless they uh, come up naturally and... Uh, it was the same like with Joe Walsh, you know, I wasn't familiar with his blues playing at all. And, uh, you know, it was a, a nice surprise that he wanted to uh, to come down and play with us. So, Was that All-Star record something that just came about naturally or had you intended to have all those guys with the Along for the Ride? Oh, yeah, that was the intention to round up all as many people as I as I wanted to. So we so we got a lot of people that were when hadn't been in the band before. You know, Billy Gibbons and Shannon Kirk and Johnny Lang. I mean, it's a huge list of people. So, but you were involved personally in saying, "I'd like to have this person, this person." I made I made the choices to reach out to the to the people that I wanted to have on there. So everybody was very happy with it. 
It's fantastic. Well, I'm really happy to get to spend some time with you. It's the great John Mayo here in Honolulu, and thank you so much for, for being so generous and giving us a little bit of your time. Yeah, it's all a bit of a rush these days, isn't it, when you're on the road? <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad we did it too, so we enjoy the show tonight. Thanks, John. All right.